Hi there, everyone. Today I have a very special guest. I have an author to interview to share with you. Um, I will be interviewing author Christina Wiggin. She is an author of faith-based specu faith speculative fiction, and she is a blogger of many talents. Hello, Christina. Hi. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm, let's see, like she already said, I'm, I write speculative fiction. I never thought about it that way. I always thought YA fantasy with, you know, kind of a Christian theme to it. Um, I also do middle grade. I've done a couple middle grade books. Uh, i got to quit that. And I'm married. I have four children, three grown, and the fourth one is a senior in high school this year. So wow. <laughs> a lot of changes going on in my life. Uh, we lived in Washington for a few years, but most of our lives have been right here in Pennsylvania. That sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> So I, um, yeah, I did notice that um, you kind of have a, a wide range where you do write um, middle grade as well as young adult. So that's pretty interesting. We may, I may ask you about that a little bit later. Okay. But I want to kind of jump into some general questions about your writing style. Okay. What would you say you actually like most about writing? I love it when the characters grab hold and run <laughs> and the story just kind of tells itself uh, okay so you're more a character driven writer yeah and a panster i don't do a lot of prep work <laughs> okay well in the same vein what is it that you like least about the writing process probably the fact when the characters go on strike <laughs> <laughs> they won't tell me the story i had that happen to me once where I was in the middle of a trilogy. First book, I knew what was happening. The last book, I knew what was happening. And I thought, okay, November's here, NaNoWriMo. I'll write the second book in the series. I thought I knew, I knew where it had to begin and where it had to end. And I thought I knew what was going in the middle, but the characters decided they didn't like that and went on strike. <laughs> so I went for about a week not knowing what I was going to write. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've had something similar. I call it my muse, where the muse just won't tell me what's happening. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So I actually want to talk a little bit about your trilogy. Is it is it the Twelve Pillars? Yeah, the Palace of Twelve Pillars. Sorry, the Palace of Twelve Pillars. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that trilogy, it looks really cool. I guess what I want to know is I, I myself have been trying to complete a trilogy. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so what... What, how did it feel, like what were you feeling when you had that finished product, this complete story told in three installments? Like what did that feel like? Uh, pretty cool. <laughs> and what was interesting was I would go back and read parts of it at, after the editing was all done and the books were published. I would go back and read some of it and just amazed that I wrote what, what I was seeing on the page. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, I, it was pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, for me, I think that's one of the cool things about writing is going back and seeing what you've done. And so when I see an author like you, and I'm like, she's she finished her trilogy, so it's kind of motivating for me to do the same. Yeah. So um, have you ever considered, like, well, just kind of dreaming about maybe your book being turned into, like, a movie or a television series or something like that, like, could you see it done visually? Uh, yeah, I think I could. And I, in fact, I've kind of already picked out who I would want to be <laughs> who. Well, <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> uh, Chris Hemsworth would be, let me get this right, Brandon, the, the not so good twin. And uh, Tom Hiddleston would be, the good twin. <laughs> right. I kind of flipped them because they kind of matched the personalities of my boys a little bit more because um, Brandon, who I was trying to avoid cliches. So Brandon, instead of being dark and broody, is the blonde one with the blue eyes. And 
um, Joachim is the opposite. He's got the dark hair and kind of looks broody, but he's the good guy. So I kind of looked at Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston and I flipped them. <laughs> that, that's actually really cool. I mean, I like it when authors kind of go outside of the, you know, like the, like people complain a lot about, you know, authors writing the same old tropes over and over, but sometimes you have to stick to certain things in your genre. But yeah. when you add a little twist like that, I think that's really cool. Now, the one thing I didn't twist on was Waldrum, King Waldrum, who's kind of the bad guy. I actually saw Alan Rickman playing him. It was <laughs> <laughs> just perfect. You know, some, there's something to be said about a really good bad guy. Like, you know yeah. he's the bad guy, you see it coming, and you kind of love the fact that he's the bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Um, so I want to shift gears a little bit, still kind of, you know, talking about your trilogy or any of your other works, but as an author, like, um, when you're promoting your work, is there like, do you have like a signature, like look, or maybe an article of clothing or some kind of staple or figure or something that you, that helps you when you're promoting your work? Well, I haven't really had the opportunity to go out in public and promote my work. I haven't, I did, I think one reading and one book signing and that's about, so at this point, you know, my, my, one of my dragons has to go with me, but that's about the extent of it at this point. Well, well see, I was just about to ask me if you had like a dragon, cause I know you really like dragons. Oh yeah. Yeah. They fill my office. In fact, we're trying to declutter right now. So I'm taking all my other toys and giving them away. <laughs> But the dragons are not leaving. Good. Hold on to your dragons. <laughs> All right. So I one thing I do know about you is that you are an avid reader. Oh, yes. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, what is it that makes a book good? Like when you're reading a good book and you're really enjoying it, what makes that reading experience good? Uh, the characters to begin with, you know, well-rounded characters a lot of action and seeing the characters pull through the story and the dealing with the conflict whether the outcome is good or bad for them and I like to see kind of a lot of bad things happen that they don't get what they want immediately because I get really frustrated if a character goes in there has a little bit of a conflict and it's resolved and he didn't he got what he wanted and it was so easy that just drives me crazy. I like to see the characters work for their results. <sighs> yeah, I, I think I'm kind of the same. Sometimes I feel like the hero of the story is it's just too obvious. Like everything is too easy. But yeah. I, yeah, I do. I like to work um, to see the characters kind of work for it. Um, so I guess that would be what you would say is kind of the thing that doesn't make a good book, a book good for you is when things come too easily or is there something right. Well, that, and I'm currently reading a book, and it's driving me crazy because this problem is so easy to fix, is grammar mistakes. And I usually don't see them in the books I read, but this one book that I'm reading right now, it's just driving me crazy. <laughs> There's yeah. so many grammar mistakes. I don't know how it got published. Yeah, that, that seems to be um, an issue. <clears throat> a lot of people think that it's just something... It occurs in the indie industry, but I, I've, I've seen it in both. Um, yeah. And sometimes I, I, I feel like um, whoever is publishing it is kind of at, at fault there because most authors, I assume, are, you know, having their books edited. And if the editor isn't catching it and the publisher isn't catching it, you know. Spell check isn't catching it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why you have to have those other right. things right. in place to hopefully somewhere along the line it gets caught. And you know, so one little error here or there is not, is not something that bugs me, but when you have numerous repeat errors on, this, on a page and it goes on page after page after page, that's just, that's like you said, bad editing. Somebody yeah. along the line missed it. <laughs> it's, it's sad when a story suffers for that particular reason. Yeah. 
But so the next question that I have is kind of a, a reader and a writer question. It's, and it's silly, but it's one that I like to ask. Um, I know that a lot of people um, have like little special places where they like to read. They have little comforts like blankets and things like that. And or maybe when you're writing, you have a certain place that you write. But one thing I'm always curious about is whether you're reading or writing, is there a particular beverage that you like? I, mine is tea. Yeah, tea here too. Don't like coffee. Just, it's, it's never appealed to me, which is really strange because my son, my oldest son runs a coffee roasting business. <laughs> but I can't just bring myself, every once in a while my daughter will get a cup of, you know, from Starbucks or my husband will get one and I'll take a sip and I'll say, ah, too much coffee in. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing about it is I, I'm, a, I'm a tea drinker. I like mostly hot teas, but I do like iced teas as well. But for some reason, I like coffee flavored ice cream. Mm, never tried that. Yeah. Well, the first time I had it was, I think, at a Cold Stone Creamery. So I think it was like a really good quality ice cream. And so, like, that's like my, if I'm going to have coffee, it's going to be in the form of ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything that you're working on now, something new that's coming down the pipe? Uh, well, I'm working on it. I'm not sure when it'll be done, uh, and it's not. It's going to be more of a long-term series because I start, and it gets. This gets into my, more of my spiritual, speculative fiction. Um, it starts at the, whew, the journey. Yeah, Jesus's journey on Earth, mm. and the the big conflict arises when he is crucified. Um, it follows two Samaritan children and what they go through is, yeah, it kind of, it starts out as a Forrest Gumpy kind of thing where the boy is a, with Jesus at different at different points in times and sees what Jesus does and wonders why his Samaritan friends tell him Jews are bad people and why you know, Jews think Samaritans are bad people and because he just doesn't see it. You know, here's this Jew doing all these wonderful things and he's got all these people telling him exactly the opposite. So it starts there where he and his sister, too, but his sister, not as much because she's been taken captive by a Roman and she's a slave at this point. And so she doesn't get to see as much of Jesus ministry as her brother does. Um, then after the crucifixion, that's when my dragons come in, because they're set. They they've come to Earth to set up a, a dragon knights, and the dragon knights are there to spread the word of God and to protect the word of God and the people of God. And they take these two kids in as the lead, who will become eventually become the leaders of the dragon knights. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And what I, what I want to do is actually follow the Dragon Knights through history, through Christian history, and pick different points, like pick the um, pick when the Christians were warring the Muslims, the Crusades, that's it. Right. Um, pick one of those. Uh, pick, eventually, I'd like to do, you know, this ISIS crisis thing, but that's a long way down the road because I think it's, too volatile right now to touch on, but just pick different parts of Christian history and touch on them with the Dragon Knights and kind of switch things around to have the Dragon Knights deal with them. That's pretty cool. I like that. That's a definitely you have a lot of material to work with if, if you're visiting these different, you know, times and sites in Christian history. So that's really cool. Yeah. So is, is this something that <clears throat> Like, it's already a work in progress? Oh, yeah. The first book is 90% finished. Oh, cool. And the second book is, um, well, actually, the first and second book started out as one book, but then I split them because it was just way too much time to cover. So I have the first book, like I said, is 90% finished. The second book is probably 25% there because I split it off from the first book, so. Okay. Um, some, the more contemporary one, I actually have a start on it, but 
it's all the stuff in between I haven't really gotten a chance to start on yet. But that's cool though. I mean, I, I always find that <clears throat> when I'm working on one project, that's when I get the inspiration to like start another. So yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Is there any advice that you would give to an aspiring writer? Well, the, the best one, I think, is, you know, butt in chair, hands on keyboard. <laughs> uh, the other thing is don't give up. You know, just because someone says your work is terrible or you're being discouraged by family or whatever, don't give up. If that's your passion, stick with it. Do it. <laughs> don't let someone tell you not to do it. Yeah, I agree. That's really good advice. So before we go, um, is where can um, my viewers find you if they want to connect with you online? Online, uh, it's www .com. That's my website. Uh, of course, small group of authors. I have a page there. <laughs> Uh, I also have a column on new evangelizers. So as far as getting my books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Muse It Up, one word, Muse It Up, bookstore. Uh, the one downside right now I see, and I'm hoping it's going to change eventually, is all of my books except, well, all of my books are available as eBooks across all the formats. Okay. Uh, only one of the books is in print right now. Oh. And I'm hoping that my publisher is someday going to fix that. But, And I had already signed contracts for it to happen, but it was before CreateSpace kind of dumped everything. So now I'm waiting to see what she's going to pick up to do the rest of the books. Gotcha. All right, well, we know that they're available in ebook. Um, and it, I want to make sure I say it right. It is the Palace of Twelve Pillars. Palace of the Twelve Pillars is book one. Palace of the Three Crosses is book two. And Sanctuary of Nine Dragons is the third book. Right. All right. That's, that sounds awesome. Do you have copies? There's the, that's the first book. And then, let's see. Well, here's a postcard with, can you oh, see that? Or? Oh, there, oh, there you go. Yeah, there's a postcard with the um, the first two books, and then uh, there's the third one. Very nice. So, and I haven't done a whole lot with the middle grade books because just <laughs> that was I didn't feel very comfortable writing them, and someone else's I kind of co-wrote well he created and I wrote and he kind of has fallen off the face of the earth so I just don't really promote them a whole lot I know I should do more but well can you at least tell us um what they are in case someone is interested uh yeah sir E. Robert Smythe and the school bully and sir E. Robert Smythe and the lost detective now is sir E. Robert Smythe see it dog he's kind of a mixture he's okay. a he's got a dog a lion a jackrabbit okay I, I, I knew it was some kind of like animal <laughs> yeah actually I, that was the one thing that I created the most of everything else the creator did but he was my creation because originally the book started out as when he wrote initially wrote the plots for them, the plot ideas. He was looking to sell them to um, kids younger than middle grade. Okay. Children's books. When he approached me, or I approached him, I don't remember anymore, he, um, he wanted to age them up to middle grade. So the character that he had doing children's books, I thought, eh, he's not going to quite work for a middle grade group. So that's when I created Sir E. Robert Smythe. Um, but yeah, they were, I, I don't say, I didn't enjoy writing them. They're fun stories, but I didn't necessarily, because that's just not my place. <laughs> I, I can relate. I've written stories that have been very uncomfortable for me to write as well, so I get it. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today, Christina, and I wish you all the best. Do you have any more closing statements you'd like to share? No, but I think we pretty much covered it. All right. Well, that's all I have for today, and be sure to stop by next time to see who else I'll be interviewing. Bye for okay, now. Bye-bye.